Welcome to Railway Legends, Myths, and Stories. I'm Kevin Stanley. Once again, we take you to the early years of railroading in the New World. Let's take a closer look at a very historic and innovative locomotive. In the early 19th century, travel between Philadelphia and New York, then the two largest cities in the USA, was long and arduous. Travel time when things were good might take all day, but if things weren't so good, it might take all day and all night besides. Heavy goods had to be sent by ship over a much longer and slower route. There was a pressing need for a better transportation system for both people and goods. On the 4th of February, 1830, the Camden and Amboy Railroad and Transportation Company was chartered. In October 1830, company president Robert L. Stevens sailed to England to meet with Robert Stevenson to acquire a locomotive for the Camden and Amboy Railroad. After much discussion, the two came to an understanding. The contract called for a four-wheel locomotive with a weight in the 10-ton range. In the practice at that time, the cylinders were placed under the locomotive and the wheels were coupled on the outside. Their new 040 locomotive was then completed in July 1831 and then shipped to Philadelphia the same month. The Camden and Amboy Railroad took delivery of their first locomotive on the 4th of September 1831. The railway gave their new engine the number one and the name Stevens for Robert L. Stevens. On the 12th of November, 1831, the locomotive was operated over a short test track. Robert Stevens wanted to show off his company's new wonder. Many prominent dignitaries and several members of the New Jersey legislature were on hand for a ride. Apparently, the engine spent much of the next two years sitting in storage waiting the railway's completion. While being one of the early locomotives in the New World might be enough to be legendary, the locomotive broke new ground in design. Like many early locomotives from England, though, the engine had more than a bit of trouble staying on the tracks. As we have said before, many tracks in the New World were, well, shall we say they were not as well laid out as might have been optimal. The locomotive began regular operation on the 9th of September, 1833. The problem of poorly laid New World tracks soon came to a head. Within two months of the start of this service, one derailment killed two people. This may have been one of the first recorded train accidents involving the death of passengers in America. To help keep the locomotive from derailing, a pair of leading wheels were added. This modification was approved by R.L. Stevens. The two small guide wheels were mounted on a pair of fixed beams with just enough weight on them to keep them in contact with the rails. This innovation caused the new leading wheels to direct the engine through curves. With the new front bogey guiding, it did a wonderful job of helping the locomotive stay on track. Although officially named Stevens, crews took to calling the engine the Old John Bull, a reference to the cartoon personification of England. This unofficial name was later shortened to just John Bull. As crews always used the name John Bull, the name Stevens fell out of use. From 1833 until 1866, the locomotive was in regular service. After this period, the engine was put in storage. In 1869, the Camden and Amboy was merged into the Pennsylvania Railroad. The PRR decided that the old locomotive would be great for publicity. To make it look more like its original configuration, they removed the cab walls and roof, but they kept the front wheels. Knowing just how historic this piece of machinery was, the railroad had it completely refurbished. On a few special occasions, they would fire it up. The locomotive was shown off at special occasions such as the Centennial Exposition in 1876 and then again in 1883 at the National Railway Appliance Exhibition. 
1884, the Pennsylvania Railroad donated the John Bull to the Smithsonian Institution, where it became their first large engineering artifact. On the 22nd of December, 1884, the John Bull premiered in its first public exhibition at the Smithsonian in the East Hall of the Arts and Industries Building. Today, it is in the transportation wing of the National Museum of American History. It appears the Pennsylvania missed the old locomotive, so in 1939, at the Altoona workshops, employees constructed a working replica of it. After all these years, even this replica is an heirloom. To commemorate the locomotive's 150th birthday, and after a great deal of thought, discussion, metallurgical testing, and soul searching, the staff of the Smithsonian decided that the John Bull could be steamed up once more. On the 15th of September, 1981, the locomotive's 150th birthday, and after much nail-biting, the John Bull was brought back to life. While keeping the steam pressure low on the Warrenton branch line, the John Bull once again moved under its own power. While it did not run far or fast, it did indeed move, thus becoming the world's oldest surviving operable steam locomotive. In 2031, the John Bull will reach its 200th year. Whether it will be steamed again, uh, which is most unlikely, we still want to take off our hats to this grand locomotive. Let's look again at what makes this particular locomotive so legendary. It was delivered on the 4th of September, 1831. Its first run was the 15th of September, 1831. It pioneered the use of a forward truck or bogey to steer itself through curves. It was retired in 1866. Later in the 19th century, it was restored, and after many years on display at the Smithsonian, it was brought back to life and last operated on the 15th of September, 1981. And as always, we'll see you on the train, no matter how old the locomotive is.